Shalom. We're just so happy to be able to be with you again in sharing some uh, important events, life events in our <laughs> experience. Uh, we call it Timeless Secrets, and it's part of a book series that I've written, Volume 1, 2, and 3. Um, and this is talking about Volume 2, what happened to us in the Philippine Islands when we were there with a group of Americans, Harold, McDougal, uh, Harold and Diane McDougall and Bobby and Rita Robinson, who had started something called Christ to the Philippines. And uh, we were trying to get uh, the, the basis for revival in that land. And it was very interesting because the Lord taught us many things. And the first thing was that we realized there was 700 missionaries in Greater Manila, about six or eight million at the time, and um, no revival. Why? And we discovered that people were trying to build churches. All their energy was building physical buildings, whereas the Lord began to speak to us um, to get the Spirit of God into the people, into the building of the, nor the natural or the spiritual temple. And uh, that's the people. Uh, and that was the beginning. When I think of the Philippines, I think of walls and I think of high walls with <clears throat> barbed wire and broken glass on top. I mean, it's very foreboding. Any neighborhood is completely locked in. Everything is locked in right. because of thievery. But the interesting thing with us was that God didn't send us to the bright lights. He didn't bring us university students. And mind you, Manila is the center for the most prestigious Roman Catholic theology centers and universities in the country. True. And <clears throat> he sent us to the villages. And our Bible school had students that were graduates from high school, but uh, young. Uh, mind you, they'd had life experience, but they, had, they did not have a profession per se. But they were malleable, they were teachable, and they were eating the word. True. But we're talking about revival, and I will just say this, that I was a, a nurse. My favorite place in the hospital was the emergency room in my early years. Something was always going on there, and people would come in that needed to be revived. They would have fainted or had a heart attack or been in an accident, and they were laid out on a stretcher, and death could have been imminent. And that, in a way, was the condition of the body in the Philippines at that time. It was gasping for air, and the Lord had to come and resuscitate it. And I think that's a pretty clear picture of what true spiritual revival is. True. He meets us in our total weakness. So... This is the uh, key here, is getting the Spirit of God into the people. Uh, and so uh, I remember that we have on our, in front where we wash, brush our teeth every morning in our bathroom, we have uh, this verse, and it says, Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him Where and is that this is in first corinthians 2 9 and this particular scripture has been uh, a key for us down through the years because love is the key here love the love of god and the love of your fellow man and to get the love of god working in them you know you think about the early disciples when they were filled with the holy spirit they were afraid they were in the upper room, but they were afraid of the Roman soldiers. They were afraid of, uh, of the authorities, the Jewish authorities, and they were, uh, they were powerless. But when the day of Pentecost fully came, they were all in one place, in one accord. They were uh, in unity, and the Holy Spirit filled them and revolutionized their lives. The, the Spirit came into flesh and blood, and that was the key to revival. And these young Filipinos, as Meridale is mentioning, became very anointed vessels of the Lord. And they were the ones that began to be a showcase for the anointing of the Holy Spirit of what God can do in any life, in any person's life. 
And um, so this was the uh, key here. And the spiritual fiesta was something else the Lord gave to us. I remember uh, learning about the culture of the Philippines and uh, they had every barrio and every village all over the country uh, every year annually would have a, a saint's day and uh, that particular day they would bring the saint that they that that was the patron saint of that village bring it out make like a parade through the village um, even sometimes make a float for it but uh, otherwise just carrying it and taking it all around the village honoring the saint of the village if it was San St. Francis, San Francisco, or St. Jose, San Jose, or, or uh, you know, there was a, a patron saint. And so I understood this, and the Lord gave me an idea, a quickening, and, a, and an idea. And it was in the, while we were praying, and the Lord began to speak to me, and I spoke this out as a prophetic word to the people we were with, uh, the Filipinos and the, and the uh, gringos, and it was to have a spiritual fiesta. And that meant that it was to be uh, uh, honoring the Holy Spirit for every village, for every place in the Philippines, not just for that one day and that one saint, but a, an ongoing revival. And that was uh, amazing because in, this, in, a, in a regular fiesta, they would put the the statue back in the church and then they'd have a great big party and it was you know a barbecued rotisserie uh, pig and they would have rice and they would have their drinks and they would have beer and uh, spirits <laughs> the hard spirits but not the Holy Spirit and the Lord was saying to me get the Holy Spirit at work in the Philippines because the people are so hungry that's great and the people were so precious and so dear. And God said, enough with the religion. Yes. Enough yes. with the divisions. Yes. Enough with your doctrines. Enough with your judgments. Go out among the people and love them. And so we began to strategize together, all of us together, praying, talking, dreaming, planning. And in our next segment, we're going to tell you what the Lord began to do. We were absolutely gobsmacked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Shalom from Jerusalem, and we look forward to being with you together. Be sure to subscribe to our, uh, our Facebook channel and, and, uh, and, and hit the like button, and uh, we look forward to being in touch with you next time. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom.